YouTube as it going the goat house is back with the latest the very newest trade candidates to watch most of these guys are actually involved in real trade talks right now so we'll see who gets dealt but we're going to break down these new candidates I'm going to give you landing spots favorite fits excited about it a lot of NFL action right now cuts trades a lot more we'll have you covered with all that and maybe the best available players heading into tomorrow uh, on twitter and right here on our channel let's get into this one the broncos are shopping their running back samaj p run a chance he is cut if he cannot be traded but there should be some takers a pretty solid back obviously with experience can catch the ball very well out of the backfield so see some teams listed that are in need of a running back when i first saw he was available i was really feeling a projection of the indianapolis colts because feel like a good fit you know with, with that Steichen offense but they could they could upgrade in terms of their running back to Trey Sermon dealing with a little bit of an injury they do like Goodson could could fill that role for now Sermon could be back soon so maybe they don't feel like it's a need but I do think it's pretty important in there uh, but then I think about the Bengals good fit that was his previous team uh, Chiefs could be a little sneaky they actually could use a backup running back it's great that he's involved in the passing game the way he is the Browns with the Chubb injury, but they do have some options. Giants may have some options, more of a wild card. The Cowboys probably need a running back more than anybody on this list. They are bringing in Dalvin Cook for a visit. I don't know if that rules them out, but maybe decreases the chances a little bit. And the Vikings, I've kind of felt over the last couple weeks that they've been looking for another running back, and they've cut a bunch today, and they're looking to trade or cut one of their backups, Wagnu, who we'll talk about in this video. But... Yeah, I think the main issue there it has been pass protection from those guys, uh, those those backup running backs, and they moved on from them. And that might be the issue with Ty Chandler as well, uh, even though they do like him, very explosive. But then you have Aaron Jones, who's their you know new running back. Durability concerns. If he goes down, can Chandler be that guy, like full-time starter? I don't know if they view him like that. Definitely talented enough, but pass protection, can, can he handle a load on the inside? So... And then they don't want to put everything on Sam Darnold, you know, right away. They want to have options. So I thought that made the Vikings make sense uh, in terms of Samaj P. Ryan here. So I do really like that fit. Another Bronco is Tim Patrick, who could be traded. And like P. Ryan, there's rumors that there are takers. There are teams interested. The Broncos could be hyping that up a little bit to try to get people in on that. But it sounds like Patrick will be traded or cut. You know, a veteran receiver, great hands, a possession receiver. Um, he it has been dealing with injuries, unfortunate injuries the last few years. So that's the risk with trading for Tim Patrick is you trade for him and he gets injured and then you go, well, I guess we should have saw that coming. So a little bit of a risk there, but I've heard there's some teams interested. There are teams looking for a receiver. Uh, the Lions, they um, somewhat surprisingly moved on from Donovan Peoples-Jones. They could use another receiver. Just look at them on paper. It's kind of obvious uh, that they could use another guy, part of the rotation. Uh, Steelers definitely could use another unless they land Ayuk. Uh, the Ravens, I like as well, uh, could use a rotational guy. The Saints, Falcons, and Cowboys are other teams that could be looking for a rotational guy. I mean, you could list a lot of teams here. I like the Lions. I really like the Lions in the Ravens. My The Steelers would be my third choice, uh, but deciding for my favorite fit, I do like the Ravens. They definitely could use someone else behind Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman in Aglor. Is there someone else to step up with those guys? But it feels like a Lions-type guy, a guy to kind of replace Josh Reynolds, um, who was with them last year, was over the last few years, and very solid. So... Um, they thought Donovan Peoples-Jones could win the trading from last year. He can be that future guy when letting Reynolds go in the offseason. But uh, they're going to need someone else. And that's the type of guy they need. They have St. Brown, do-it-all guy, dominant from the slot. James, you know, Williams is uh, obviously a deep threat but could be used you know, underneath as well, obviously with his speed. It's just something it does not feel like they have as a Tim Patrick-style receiver. Um, so that – makes sense is a fit the scare the risk why teams might be by might back off that again his uh injury risk i say is definitely higher than than most uh but a, again a solid veteran receiver here we'll see what these what happens with these broncos guys traded or cut uh next got ernest jones this, this popped up a few days ago that uh, the Rams are allowing him to seek a trade. And then he said that he did not ask for a trade, but that both are true, actually. They tried to reach a long-term deal, the Rams and Jones. It didn't happen uh, because the Rams don't love paying 
defensive players, but specifically linebackers, and maybe he's asking for a little too much. So they go, hey, go look for a trade, see what other teams would give you. That could drop the price for the Rams, or that could make him say, hey, I'll just stay and play out the final year of my contract. Um, you know, so it's just smart business move for the Rams. So it doesn't necessarily mean he will be traded just because they're allowing him to seek a trade. I think he'll be traded or kept. Uh, but there are some teams that use the linebacker. You think of the Bills, they're going to lose Matt Milano for a good portion of the big portion of the season. Uh, the Falcons, they've been, they're not afraid to make a move. Raheem Morris was the Rams defensive coordinator. He's now the Falcons coach. Do they feel they need an upgrade at linebacker? A little bit of a question. Browns could use another one. Eagles could use another one. I kind of get the feeling those teams feel like they're set. Leads me to the Titans, which is my favorite fit. I do think it's a scheme fit. I think he'll play very well in that Denard Wilson defense. I don't know how much they'll value linebacker. They bring in Kenneth Murray, who they seem to like, but it's up in the air in terms of now and the future for him. After that, they're, they're kind of getting ripped with injuries, and they could use an upgrade next to Murray. I mean, they really are lacking depth. Maybe they go for a smaller depth guy. But, man, this guy would be a starter next to Murray, and it would really upgrade them. And they, uh, you know, I, out of all these teams, I think by far the one that makes the most sense right now is the Titans in terms of, yeah, scheme fit. Maybe Raheem Morris and the Falcons. We'll see if they end up doing this, though. Uh, but that it's a pretty good player uh, that I'm going to keep checking my phone because it was nonstop stuff. Uh, oh, my God, the Cardinals releasing Des- Desmond Ritter, who they just traded for. Uh, this offseason but Ernest Jones could be a pretty good one available we'll see what the Rams want to do I think it's kind of a business decision to go have him go out there and see what he's worth it's kind of one of those situations but moving on to more of the latest trade candidates Uh, John Mechie popped up yesterday it was and there's been a lot of talk a lot of buzz about that just because this is a a notable guy, like a really good receiver from Alabama, and then he had a little bit of a health scare early in his career in Houston. We're still early in his career, but just has so much upside. I love his upside from the slot, but I love that he can do both. I think he, you know, as long as he's healthy, I think he's got some good football ahead of him. I'll say right now, and I listed him as traded or kept for the Texans. I really think that they keep him, but it was definitely one I needed to talk about because there's a lot of chatter about it, mainly with fans. Uh, and then actually right before going to record this, they released Noah Brown, which is a little surprising because he was pretty solid for them last year. Um, that's a pretty, uh, pretty solid receiver that's going to be available. That made it even less likely they trade Mechie, but there are teams calling and there are teams interested. I could list half the league, half the league looking for a cheap receiver, a guy with upside. But those are the teams that stood out. And I'll actually go with the Falcons. And at first glance, you may not think the Falcons should be in on a receiver, but uh, after stud receivers Drake London and, and Darnell Mooney, there really isn't much. Remember, they traded uh, Desmond Ritter, who we were just mentioned of because he got released, uh, for uh, Rondale Moore, and that was supposed to be their like kind of yeah their shifty third receiver, and he went down for the year with an unfortunate injury. So this feels like a really good fit for that type of offense. They're going to run like a Rams style offense. It just I could see him, you know, being being a legit option that plays in the slot and outside for Atlanta so that is by far my favorite fit uh not that I don't like the other fits it just makes it just I love the fit in that offense uh but I think it's less likely it's I'd say definitely under 50 percent chance Mechie gets traded but it's a big talking point uh right now but that would be a big one like one of the favorites you know if somebody land like out of the candidates if someone landed him via trade uh, Vikings are shopping a few guys. If they cannot sh- trade them, they will cut him, but they're young. They have upside. Jocelyn Roy, who was a pretty good prospect uh, at, a, at a LSU last year, uh, they're making him available. And I heard there are teams sniffing around. They're calling around for defensive tackle specifically. And then typically... We've seen the trades that have already happened this, you know, yesterday, the last, you know, last few days, the last week or so. It's young got young upside guys that's you know they still have upside and their quality depth that they want to work with they feel like they just need a change of scenery you see a pattern you see a trend with those types of guys so here's another one of those so if teams are looking for d tackles i think there's a decent chance somewhat of a decent chance that he could be traded for but the vikings will cut him and you try to get him off waivers but some teams that definitely could use another d tackle uh texans Bengals, dolphins seahawks i heard they're sniffing around for some the chargers in the browns um to me, the Chargers badly need one, so I'd kind of put them as a front runner for any of these D tackles that could be available. And the Bengals badly need one, but do they need more of a nose tackle? That's a little bit of a question there. Um, 
The Chargers are weird. I want to put the Chargers as my favorite fit because they badly need one. It could work out there. You know, former good recruit played at a big school LSU. Makes sense for hardball. They're a little quiet, though. They're staying quiet. Are they focused on the future? We'll see. I really like the Texans. The Texans can be looking for a guy. I almost listed the Texans as my favorite fit, but I ended up going with the Dolphins. They badly need depth. Badly, badly need depth uh, in there after losing Christian Wilkins, but just not having a, a ton of options. But I was back and forth. Texans or Dolphins for my favorite fit there. Uh, it's very tough to... You know, single out one team where where a small guy like a not a big name could land, but taking shots at it, almost kind of thinking going back to the Texans there where he could land, but um, yeah, I was kind of back and forth between those two teams or the other teams that I listed. Uh, Vikings are also shopping running back Kane Wagner, who's also a pretty good return man, four two speed, blazing speed guy. Uh, struggles in pass protection. That's kind of the issue on why he can't really get on the field more, but. He's a home run hitter. He's a very explosive. I think he could hold some value. He could very he could very well end up being cut. There are some teams that I like. The Seahawks don't necessarily need a running back. I mean, even McIntosh looking pretty good in preseason as their third back. Uh, but the guy that pounded uh, Palomalu, running back coach in Seattle, who pounded the table for Wagner in, in for the Vikings in their draft a few years ago. That that was that was the guy. So that's why I thought I would list him. But uh, I was going to go Cowboys. I mean, they're bringing in. Uh, the his former teammate Dalvin Cook, and that actually can make sense. They can bring in both, no problem. Uh, so I was really going to go Cowboys. I thought it was like so obvious, but man, I think the Chiefs need a backup running back, and his speed, uh, his return ability, and you know his involvement in the again that speedy offense. I think makes a lot of sense. But man, Chiefs Cowboys, some serious teams to watch for him if, if traded or cut. That's the beauty of this video. If they're not traded, and they're cut. It's it's still a valid video with landing the landing spots that make sense in my opinion. Uh, the Commanders are shopping some guys. Uh, John Ridgeway, a decent nose tackle, you know, decent stopping the run, not an every down guy, but uh, a physical guy, really solid stopping the run. Uh, he could be traded or cut. It sounds like he has some takers. He has some value. To me, the Bengals badly need a nose tackle, but they have Sheldon Rankins, their their big free agency addition, listed as a nose tackle. I think he's more of just a D tackle. Um, so it's going to depend on their thoughts there, but I think they badly need a nose tackle, like run stopping help in general, whether it's depth or not. Um, so I would love for the Bengals to do something like this. Uh, Seahawks, I keep hearing they are looking around for quality depth defensive linemen because they don't have much behind this at all behind the starters. Uh, they do have Jonathan Hankins in there right now, longtime veteran, so could use depth behind him or a replacement. Uh, the Dolphins, again, they need they need defensive line, interior defensive linemen. The Texans definitely are looking for some. Uh, that's kind of the only thing they missed out on. In, uh, in the offseason was interior help, so look for them to look for a guy. In the Chargers, I think they badly need someone, especially to stop the run. So I really like those teams for him. I want to go with Seahawks because, man, I think the team that makes the most sense is probably the Bengals or the Chargers uh, in terms of need. But logic, uh, I'm going to go you know, just because I, I'm hearing the Seahawks are kind of calling around for a depth, specifically a depth guy. They don't need a starter. They need a guy that maybe is capable of starting if they have, they have to start him. So I'll, I'll just use based on what I'm hearing there. I'll go, uh, you know, Seattle Seahawks uh, for a guy like that who is drawing some interest. Another uh, Commanders guy, their center, who is supposed to be a lot better than he has been, been very underwhelming. Ricky Stromberg, uh, I think, will be traded or cut. They're also shopping Cole Turner, who could be a sneaky tight end. I've heard there's really no trade value for him. But I think he, I think there's something there. I think it'd be um I would wait till he gets caught and then try to sign him. But that could be a sneaky one. But Stromberg, I've heard there's been some interest. There's actually quite a few teams that need a center, mainly a, a backup because they don't have a backup or a good enough backup, and their starter is a little, eh. Not all those teams listed. So it's a guy that is would be a important backup that could be a starter. So the Jets, Chargers, Steelers, you know, Broncos, Dolphins were more of a wild card. The Bears as well. I heard the Bears could be looking for a center, but they traded for Bates. They signed Shelton. Uh, you know, uh, if they end up trying to find another training for another center, it just feels like a mess that they, they cannot figure that position out. So, uh, but I've heard the, the watch for the Bears, but, uh, you know, the Broncos make sense. They could use them as a starter or, or right away a backup. Um, but, yeah, the Steelers had an injury there, but they do have Frazier. Uh, Chargers have Bozeman, but he has some durability concerns. The Jets, uh, they, they like Tipman, but 
they they uh, need to value depth very much so with what's happened to their O line over the last couple of years. So I I was originally going to go with the Jets, but I think other teams need him more. Broncos. Chargers, you know, teams like that, uh, but went with the Broncos there. So this is the latest. These are the latest trade candidates uh, that are available. Actually, all the, these guys have been rumored to be involved in talks. It doesn't necessarily mean they will be traded, but the favorite thing about this video is that these guys – may not be traded they could be cut but the landing spots kind of stand there could be surprise landing spots that we don't know about there could be surprise trade candidates of course uh you know or cut candidates that we don't know about we have you covered live as everything's going on on our twitter link pinned in the comments for that uh we'll also have a video on the biggest cuts slash the best guys that are available they're not always the biggest names there's some intriguing guys that got cut we got you guys covered here on our twitter thanks for watching that'll do it goodbye